Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain. We're going to talk about uh, Candace Owens, who's been getting herself into trouble, and uh, who's planning to visit Australia, and they want to ban her. So stick around and listen. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Candace Owens, um, you know, she uh, is a great uh, American commentator on politics. And, um, you know, she, uh, you know, is one of the, you know, great, uh, you know, uh, conservative voices in, you know, in the American political scene, you know, up there with uh, Tucker Carlson and, and people like this. But, you know, she's a, per a person of colour. Not only is she a person of colour, she's a woman of colour. So she's a conservative woman of colour. So in a sense, she occupies a certain kind of uh, place uh, of almost veneration, ladies and gentlemen, because I think most Republicans are quite happy to have such a smart and intelligent woman, um, you know, uh, woman of colour on their side. So, you know, I think she's been a great ally to Conservatives and Republicans over the past eight years, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But, you know, uh, she's been getting herself into hot water. Now, what's she been doing? Um, you know, well, she's been going a little bit Kanye, Kanye West. She actually interviewed Kanye a few times. And, uh, you know, uh, maybe Kanye's influences began to rub off on her. Um, you know, and uh, she's began to talk about problems that emanate from the Jewish community. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into this, we're going to say things I'm about to discuss are what Candace Owens says. I'm not saying them. All I'm doing here, humbly, at the report from Tiger Mountain is reporting on them. So, you know, she's talking about, you know, things like, you know, the blood libel, you know, um, which is, of course, you know, forbidden this um, kind of idea that at least during the medieval period there were certain ceremonies that um, Jewish groups did that involved using the blood of, uh, of Christian children. Now, you know, um, this is a very hotly debated topic because, you know, uh, if you look at the historical evidence, there's some evidence that it was going on and there's some evidence also that at times it was, um, you know, made up, it was uh, fictional, it was a result of a kind of hysteria. So, you know, uh, she gets into examining that, which is incredibly controversial, and um, she also goes into a thing called Sabbatee and Frankism. And you know what, I, I thought, you know, I don't know too much about that. So I got a few books, I ordered a few books. You know, here we go, 1666 and uh, The Heresy of Jacob Frank, ladies and gentlemen, which tells you a little bit about it. Um, what it was, in 1666, uh, there was a, um, um, a Jewish fellow who decided he was the Messiah. And uh, he was named Sabbati Devi, and he started a movement called Sabbateeism. And um, it became quite a popular movement. Um, it was considered heretical by about half the Jewish community, but the other half of the Jewish community was sort of open to it. And uh, it was a sort of um, a millenna millenarian kind of idea that the apocalypse was coming. Uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, I mean, I'm still reading about it, so I'm not a, a huge expert in it, but it did involve um, elements of transgression of the traditional laws of the of the Talmud and the Jewish community. And then along came uh, uh, Jacob Frank in the uh, 18th century. He was born around 1720 and he died in around 1790. And, uh, you know, he really, uh, look, you know, how can I best describe it from what I've read about him so far? You know, he, he is a kind of... Uh, he took Sabbateeism and made it what you would call satanic or Luciferian. You know, he, he believed in, um, you know, uh, uh, purification through transgression, which means that whatever laws, say, for example, the Ten Commandments, you should break them all, you know, and that includes sexual mores. Uh, he was rumoured to conduct orgies. So something like Epstein Island would be completely cool under, you know, Jacob Frank's philosophy. So, you know, he was somebody who really... Um, you know, broke many of the traditional laws of the Jewish community. Now, you know, he uh, was considered a heretic. Um, Sabbatee Devi had to convert to Islam to avoid being killed. And uh, Jacob Frank himself had to convert to Christianity. But one of the interesting things about Jacob Frank is he recommended that Jews do do that, that they do sometimes convert to Islam or Christianity, but to remain secretly um, Sabbatee and Frankist underneath, to, to, to remain these kind of Luciferian characters underneath so that they should use, um, you know, uh, deception and all forms of mischief um, to achieve their, um, you know, Mephistophelian goals, ladies and gentlemen. So it's all kind of complex. You know, now what extent, you know, does this have an influence on, on today's society? Well, let's get back to Candace Owens. Candace Owens claims, because, you know, she claims there are a lot of nice Jewish people that she knows. And we, we all know that's true. We all have Jewish friends who you are clearly not part of some grand conspiracy. So she likes she likes to try and work out why are there some people from the Jewish community who are very nice and uh, there are others who seem to be involved in, you know, 
um, you know, ideas and ideology that are very destructive. And she claims that, you know, a lot of these Washington, D.C. Um, Jews, she believes, are Sabbatean Frankists. And if you go back to the time of Jacob Frank, that in the last 20 years of his life, because he was jailed for 10 years, that he got involved in politics and that he was involved with Masonic groups and that he was involved with the Rothschilds. And, that, you know, in a sense, it's the, the rumor is, is that, you know, Sabbatean Frankism became a kind of underground movement and that families like the Rothschilds carried it on now. Is that true? I have no idea, ladies and gentlemen. Candace Owens seems to believe that it is. And so she's been talking about things like that. It's not like she's only talking about that. She's bringing it up as a kind of talking point and she's been discussing all these kind of issues. So, you know, it's really fascinating and she wants to come to Australia. So um, I see no reason to ban uh, such a, uh, an intelligent lady. And, um, you know, I think that the Jewish community should welcome this you know, because if there is a problem within the Jewish community, surely the Jewish community would like to solve it, you know, and discuss it openly, you know. Because, for example, if you wanted to discuss the problem of, of, of Muslim terrorism, uh, that uh, Hirsi Ali, you know, she uh, you know, discusses problems with Islam and, you know, she's welcome to this country, you know. And I think that it's healthy when someone um, questions problems in the community. And I think that's all that, um, you know, Candace Owens is doing. I don't believe she's being anti-Semitic. So, you know, there it is. I think she should be allowed to come to Australia. And um, I think the issues, uh, you know, she raises, um, you know, should get you on Amazon so you can study about these fascinating figures. The Heresy of Jacob Frank, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. There's a lot of books on him. So there's a few, few out there you can find and read. So, um, you know, it's all fascinating. And it's part of the discussion that Candace Owens is opening. So I don't think she, she should be banned. And I hope we get to see her here. And I, for one, will be attending if she comes to Melbourne, that's for sure. So uh, we love you here in Australia, Candice, and we send a shout-out, and uh, we hope to see you soon.